In a remarkable experiment, a cell of E. coli was lysed, releasing its chromosome for electron microscopy. What spewed out of this single cell was a strand of DNA 1,500 times longer than E. coli itself. How could this enormous molecule fit into a single cell? Inside a bacterial cell, the DNA is much more tidy. The DNA is compacted into a structure called a nucleoid. A nucleoid consists of DNA arranged in tightly wound loops with the boundaries of the loop domains defined by histone-like anchoring proteins. The DNA in the loops is supercoiled. That is, the double helix of DNA coils upon itself, creating a tighter, more compact structure. If one of the strands of a double helix is cut, the DNA loses its supercoils as the tension dissipates. However, the other domains remain supercoiled because they are constrained at their bases by the anchoring proteins, which prevent rotation. To understand supercoiling, consider a completely relaxed circular piece of DNA. An unstressed DNA molecule naturally forms a helix with about 10 base pairs per turn. Now consider cutting a strand, unwinding a turn, and then resealing the DNA. The DNA is now underwound and has one too few helical turns. The DNA will naturally attempt to return to the same number of turns as before, but considering the DNA has been resealed in this underwound form, it must now create a supercoil in the opposite direction in order to relieve the stress. Negative supercoils such as this one relieve the torsional strain of underwound DNA, while positive supercoils relieve the strain from overwound DNA. This circular double-stranded DNA has five negative supercoils. If the supercoils were removed, the DNA would be revealed to be underwound by about five turns. The torsional stress in the underwound DNA is relieved by rewinding and at the same time creating negative supercoils. How does DNA achieve a supercoiled state? A bacterial cell produces enzymes that can twist DNA into supercoils and relieve supercoils. Enzymes that change DNA supercoiling are called topoisomerases because they change the topology of DNA. Type 1 topoisomerases cleave only one strand of a double helix, while type 2 enzymes cleave both strands. Type 1 enzymes are generally used to relieve or unwind supercoils, while type 2 enzymes use energy to add supercoils. Topoisomerase 1 binds to DNA and opens up the two strands, loosening the double helix. This loss of a turn in the double helix allows the DNA to convert from five supercoils to four. Topoisomerase 1 cleaves one strand of a double helix, holds on to both ends, and passes the other intact strand through the break, after which it religates the strand. The topoisomerase comes off the DNA, leaving the circular molecule with four supercoils instead of five. An example of a type 2 topoisomerase is DNA gyrase, whose function is to introduce negative supercoils in double-stranded DNA, rather than to remove them. The active gyrase complex is a tetramer composed of two gyre A and two gyre B proteins. First, gyre B grabs one section of the double-stranded DNA. Then, gyre A introduces a double-strand break in the DNA and becomes covalently attached to the breaks as it holds the two ends apart. Adding a negative supercoil to DNA requires energy, which is gained through ATP hydrolysis. Gyre A, which is an ATPase, uses the energy of ATP hydrolysis to pass the intact double-stranded section through the double-strand break. Gyre B then rejoins the cleaved DNA and opens at the other end to release the newly sealed strand. The DNA molecule now contains one negative supercoil. To maintain proper DNA supercoiling levels, a cell must delicately balance the activities of the two types of topoisomerases. The nucleoids of bacteria and most archaea, as well as the nuclear DNA of eukaryotes, are kept negatively supercoiled. 
Because the DNA is underwound, the two strands of negatively supercoiled DNA are easier to separate than positively supercoiled DNA, which is important for transcription enzymes like RNA polymerase that must separate strands of DNA to make RNA. Some archaeal species living in acid at high temperature have a challenge of keeping their DNA from denaturing, that is, separating into single-stranded DNA. To solve this problem, their DNA is overwound, resulting in positive supercoils. It is proposed that the extra turns in the DNA tighten the coil, which would require more energy in the form of heat to separate the strands.